What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and today I have another mining video for you. Uh, specifically, we're going to be taking a look at the 5700 XT and have the easiest steps to go ahead and get it up and running at that rate you keep seeing advertised, that 55 to 57 mega hash a second. There's a few little caveats and a couple little tips and tricks I have for you, and we will go ahead and get into that right now. Okie dokie, so we're going to be using Windows 10. We have done a flashing tutorial for the vBIOS on HiveOS. However, we haven't done it on Windows 10. We're just going to use the 5700 XT while I have it in this Windows 10 test bench here to show you guys how to go ahead and do it. But as you can see, we are mining ETH right now at 56.637 mega hash a second. And I'm going to show you how we got those numbers. First of all, we're gonna to have to go ahead and close out of this miner so we can get into it. And then we are going to head on over to the interwebs. And the first thing you're gonna to need to do is head on over to download GPU-Z. I'll leave links, of course, down in the description. <clears throat> you can go ahead and click download and then it'll download an executable and you can install it on your system. And then we are gonna open GPU-Z. Once you have GPU-Z open, we're gonna go ahead and export the BIOS, which is this little save BIOS button, unassuming gray button that I think they don't want you to use. And we're gonna click save to file. Once we click save to file, you're gonna click your downloads because we're gonna be working out of the downloads folder. We're gonna go ahead and rename this one stock and save. And as long as you follow this to the T, it should be pretty straightforward. So name it stock.rom when you export it. The next thing we're going to need to do is get Red BIOS Editor. So we'll leave a link down in the description below. It'll be a page like this. And then you will go ahead and click download on Red BIOS Editor. And it will download an executable that you will then run and install. So once you have that installed, we're gonna go ahead and do red BIOS editor and get it open. And in red BIOS editor, editor we're gonna click load and then we're gonna go to our downloads folder and select the stock ROM and click open. At this point, we're gonna head on over to the VRAM timings page. And this is where you can set the latency, your CAS latency or your timings for your, your memory. Now, a really easy way to do this that everybody's uh, already gone over is you can just copy the cell in 1550 megahertz and paste it into the 1800, the 2000, and the 2250. Really, because of where we're hitting, you only really need to paste it into 1800 megahertz. And what you'll notice is that it will paste over that 22 CAS latency timing and just pre-fill all of the timings for you. Now, one of the reasons nobody's really figured out timing straps yet on the 5600 XT is because those light, those timings are actually a little bit tighter. And I'm working trying to get it figured out, but it's gonna have to be custom and coming into here, and then hopefully I'll get the code for you. But at this time, I haven't quite figured it out. Give me another couple weeks and we'll, we'll get it sorted. That being said, for the 5700 XT, it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and click save. And then we're gonna name this one modded.rom. And then we're gonna click load. Load the same modded ROM that we just modified. Go back to VRAM timings. Select the second set. And this is the same memory type module that matches the 5600 XT and we have those 20 CAS latency timings, which is interesting. Um, just a few tips and thoughts and tricks that we may try later with that 5600 XT because I'm focused on it. Anyways, you're just gonna do the same thing you did previously and paste, them, paste the, the timings from the 1550 all the way down to the 2000 and you'll notice that the timings will be adjusted and tightened it all the way up to 20 CAS latency. At this point we're going to click save 
Just highlight the modded dot ROM that we already did and click save again. We're gonna go ahead and load it one more time. Head on over to the VRAM timings and just make sure at least the 1800 megahertz is set in both memory modules. So we've confirmed that, we've edited the BIOS. The BIOS is saved to our downloads folder and now we're gonna go ahead and exit. The next thing we're gonna need to download is the flash tool. The flash tool that worked for me on the 5700 XT was the 3.04 plus for Windows on the Mir 2. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to download all this because you have to kind of go through a, a, a couple hoops, but I'll give you a hint. First of all, you're gonna do like username at domain.com for your email. You're gonna check the box and then click download link. It'll be right here. Okay, so once you click download link, it's gonna email you a link with the download in it. Be sure to check your spam folders and your junk folders because it most likely went there. Once you click that, you'll be able to download the file and you'll be good to go. I currently already have it downloaded. And as you can see here in downloads, we have amdvbflash.exe. So at this point, we're ready to flash our BIOS. So what we're gonna do is open a command prompt, elevated command prompt, so right click and run as administrator. And then I have a little handy dandy notepad here to go over it with you guys. So here are the commands you'll need to paste into the command prompt. First being changing your directory to the downloads folder. Ta-da, easy peasy, right? I'll leave all of these commands down in the description below as well. The next thing we need to do is unlock the ROM. So we're gonna control C and then right click into the command window. That's how you paste into a command prompt. Click enter. And at this point, we can read that the ROM is unlocked. Finally, you're going to control C to copy the final command. Right click into the command prompt and press enter. At this point, it's gonna flash the BIOS and go through the process. And then when it's complete, you're going to need to reboot. Now, um, it's funny because F option doesn't support an external version of the tool. Please refer to the tool help. Uh, for uh, support for an already flashed flash already program so um, this is going to work specifically if you have it haven't already done it and that will be the command that will be in there for us just to give you guys an idea this should do it for us we're going to remove that dash four dash f switch it's already programmed it's already programmed with the same settings, so it's not gonna let us go through. I will uh, post a picture of what it actually looks like so you can see, um, but it'll essentially go through a little option that says, you know, you pro flashing successful, please reboot your system. Then once you reboot your system, um, and I'm gonna save this for you guys as well. Here, we're just gonna save as before I forget. Uh, we're gonna name it how to mod BIOS. Okay. And then the next thing I'm gonna advise you to do is get a new miner. I know we already went over using Claymore. Today we're gonna talk about Phoenix Miner, which is regarded as the fastest ET hash uh, miner out. You're gonna click download and then just go ahead and head to your downloads, right click and extract. And then I have mine in my little miners folder here. You will just edit the batch file to go ahead and add in the pool and the wallet address. You can follow the how to mining video uh, that we'll link up in the corner for you guys that we did a little bit ago and you can follow that guide. And then once that's complete, you can go ahead and run it and you will be good to go. Now, <clears throat> couple notes. If you don't have a secondary GPU, don't do this because if you brick the GPU, you won't be able to bring it back up, okay? So if you don't have another GPU, don't even try this unless, of course, well, I guess if you had an APU or an integrated GPU 
on your uh, processor, then maybe that, that counts as a GPU. But if you don't have another GPU, like let's say you're running an AMD Ryzen 3600 or something, don't do this, it's gonna break it. If you want to game on it, do not do this, it will break it, okay? If the system comes up with a black screen, won't boot, etc. don't freak out. Use either your output from the integrated GPU on your processor or use another GPU to boot into the system and reflash. You will follow the same process that we just followed. Only difference being is that instead of using the modded ROM, you will use the stock ROM. Not every GPU is the same and not every GPU will be able to reach the tight memory timings that we have just programmed into the modded ROM. If you'd like me to go ahead and upload this modded ROM so you don't even have to make the memory timing changes, let me know as well and we'll get it uploaded into some sort of file repository for you guys to download. We'll name it something like 5700 XT modded BIOS and you can just download it and we'll go over that process later. I think at this point though, this is really, really simple. I think for the 5600 XT, once I get that figured out, then we'll upload the ROM for everybody. Uh, this way, I, I don't, a monkey could do this, as my dad would say. So, you know, so easy a monkey could do it. I don't even know if that's appropriate to say anymore now that I think about it, but whatever, I didn't mean any ill intent by it, we'll clarify. Um, thanks everybody for watching. If this video is helpful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. And I will see you next Tuesday.